It's 2065. The little knowledge that remains was long seduced by modernist facades, propping up dreams of floating dreams in thick, polluted air. Our physiology is not coping with the rapid heat rise. Our bodies and blood are not coping with the migrating diseases and germs. We're sick, we're irritated, and due to climatic conditions in swaths of millions, we're climatically displaced. Nobody lives here anymore. The views are obsolete. Tourists do not come here, planes do not land. Now, as negative and alarming as this sounds, it paints one interpretation of the picture of the current direction that things are going. And for the most part, design made this mess. And design can get us out of it. And this is my interest. What if we could embrace relational complexity and design redirective cultural events that open discussion about what needs to be learned for climate change and global unsettlement in the coming decades? And what if indigenous knowledge, part of my own Aboriginal heritage, and knowledge from my margins all over the world were written into this script. This could be culturally productive for those that have been on the receiving end of the darker side of modern colonial worlds. So can we value what's coined as traditional Indigenous knowledge as sustaining, but also knowledge, Indigenous knowledge and, margin, and knowledge from the margins all over the world for its skills in adaptation, mitigation and redirection amongst dispossession destruction, disconnection of their living environments from climate change and conditions? Can we value those skills for its resilience, resourcefulness, bricolage and repair? And can we recognise that these skills and knowledge, these are what are needed for all of humanity to have increased options to face the future challenges in the coming decades? An uncle once expressed his concerns to me out in Western Queensland in a very small outback town of about 2,000 people. He said, you know, our people need to know what's going to happen here in 50 years' time. He said there could be 100,000 people out here. And you know what, on both accounts, that wise and respected uncle could be exactly right. But this actually excites me to think that there still does remain so much opportunity to revalue knowledge lost, to rethink which knowledge going forward, from whom, by whom, and for whom to address the concerns of that wise old uncle. So my research lies in navigating the infinite number of possibilities where one might draw together seemingly isolated things and illustrate their relational connectedness. And this fits well with systems thinking and design thinking, but it also fits really well with indigenous knowledge of relational pattern thinking in time of ancestral pasts brought forward and disclosed in the present. So today I'm going to draw together these things, climate change, cities, Aboriginal culture, mega sports events such as the Commonwealth Games, Olympic Games and the World Cup, and future planning. And I'm going to illustrate how they can unfold and feed off each other and act and strengthen each other and act as catalysts of change. And cognitive mapping helps me do this. But this looks really overly complex. It's actually really simple. There are things that appear in the present, and they've all come from somewhere. And usually they've come from somewhere from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And they're all going to gather in the future in a current direction, if not redirected. But the future is also already full with things we've already put there. And it's clashing with that current direction. So my interest lies in redirecting around that clash. Can we imagine more desirable future scenarios? Not utopias, not end goals, just paths forward in ever-changing worlds. But we still have this big gap between our desired future scenario and the present as it appears. And this gap is where design takes place, but not just any design, big scale, long-term transformational design. So what could we put in place here, now, in 2015, that might transform experiences in a way that makes us act in and on the world in completely unrecognisable ways than ways that we may have 10 years earlier. So I want you to come on that journey with, to me, with me today. It's 2065, and, the, and this coastal city is a little bit like some of my colleagues proposed a couple of years ago when they said the coastal city will be a project of the whole city being retreated and resettled. 
but what if we veer in a different direction? It's 2065, there's a current direction. Nationalist notions of Australia as an island fortress defending itself through border patrols continue to draw no connection between its own fossil fuel affluence and the reasons why climate refugees are arriving on its shores. It's still rebuilding communities in the same devastated places, devastated by coastal degradation and sea level rises in fortified locations. Luckily, this clash was identified, and in 2018, redirective events were activated to get us to a different future scenario. Marlian asks his mother, what's a natural disaster? And his mother answers, well, it's actually something we experience much less now. We live in mobile and regenerative settlements that address the unfolding and ever-changing environmental social conditions. We learn lessons from indigenous knowledge that when conditions begin to deteriorate, it's best to get our cities out of the way. Well, his little brother Bowen designs and develops how-to manuals for incoming climate-displaced refugees, searching for survival in a harsh and foreign land. But it's 2065 again, there's another current direction. Impacts of climate change and population growth in Australia and in Asia, they've undermined Australia's ability to produce enough food for its own country, let little little alone a food surplus to sell internationally. Or there's an alternative future scenario. Manel works for Native Food Adaptive Practices, facilitated by Indigenous groups nationwide. And she develops great varieties of wild food that are integrated into socio spaces. And these, this, this food um, releases the pressure on the bulging populations here and abroad. And lean seasons are experienced according, according to climatic conditions. And they're creative and culturally productive regenerative harvest festivals. Now, as radical as all this sounds, I'm merely scenario-building situations that illustrate conditions by which we've mitigated, adapted, or redirected around those future challenges that climate scientists and philosophers have warned us about. Put simply, we'll be faced with options to retreat, avoid, or defend. And whichever way you look at these options, all are going to require radical transformational change at technical, cultural, social, political, and economic levels. So bearing all of this in mind, what might a mega sports event look like in 2065? Well, in the city that moves, resident cultures, in their difference, combine their common wealth of knowledge in the participation of the climate change and global unsettlement adaptation games. Now, if there's a more catchy name for that, <laughs> let me know. But teams negotiate obstacles and challenges that are forever and collectively faced in their uh, ever-shifting, unsettled socio-environmental spheres. So agree with these scenarios or not, we've still got this big gap between those desired futures outlined and the present as it appears. And we don't know how to fill it. Well, either way, inevitably, design fills it. And designing redirective cultural events might fill it. So it's 2018, and there's an Aboriginal cultural event in a coastal city that coincides with a mega sports event. And there's a walking ceremony through green space corridors. And along those corridors, there's social enterprise indigenous knowledge hubs that mediate a conversation along the way, a radical conversation, one that's already occurring in places like Tuvalu, of moving that coastal city. And the metaphoric hook lines might be something like the last way in for a 2065 blind and floating broken dreams or something more positive, the open space for a way out for 2065 re retreat and regenerative resettlement. So, of course, these are just but one amongst many examples upon which we might begin to dis discuss about the kind of long-term legacies that can be left behind by mega sports events and cultural events for our cities. So it's 2015. And today I've tried to break away from short-sightedness Look at big timescales in the big picture. And I'm convinced that we don't have to travel in the current direction and hurdle forward blindly at the speed of light, but that we can design futures to navigate our way around them. And I hope that you might like to explore things in your world as well, where you might map out and embrace relational complexity, value Indigenous knowledge, and design in time with imaginative foresight. Thank you very much.